Hello and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. Uh, so if you haven't been following along, I think I've unfortunately kind of assigned my name on the like ending for the campaign. Uh, I basically made a deal with Caster to get myself and uh, Lem and Mina on board the generation ship the uh what was it, what is it called side reel side reel horizon um yeah and i don't know if i can really do much to change it so i'm just gonna try and complete as many stories as i can before uh you know that completes itself so let's start with um the ambergris I don't I feel like this is like all oh, kind of a waste of time in a way because even if I complete this it's just gonna start a story thread that I won't be able to see the end of but whatever we'll see it we'll see it through uh, Ankita is a, is crouched in the computing core of the ambergris swearing to herself when you enter she doesn't look up these shits completely ruin the core's connectors when they cut it. She holds up a thick a fistful of ragged wires. The ship mine they ripped won't even be usable without replacing these. She throws the bundle of wires across the room. Amateurs. Who took it? Can we repair it? There's nothing to repair. We need an entire ship mine. Not exactly the first thing you can expect to dredge up from a scrap freighter, she sighs. Fragments, maybe. Uh, sections of a mind, but a complete ship mind? No way. And Kita climbs out of the cooling well, where the ship mind should be. The space suddenly crowded with her on the same level as you, towering over you uh, as she stoops beneath the low curved ceiling. Come on, nothing to be done here now. She leads back to, uh, leads you back through the guts of the amber. Though you could find the way back yourself, the repair process has left you familiar with the cutter's idiosyncratic layout all diagonal angles and bundled tubes what do we do now Ankita seems lost in thought and you focus on the corridors ducking below conduits and passing through bulkheads eventually you arrive in the galley though it's hard to tell most of the benches and prep surfaces are covered in, in half stripped components and welded hull patches Ankita shoves a box of filters to the floor and sits there's no way around it she starts out of nowhere we need a new ship mind I can salvage one. I like your confidence, sleeper. Maybe if we check out the Ord Exchange or speak to some scrap dealers, she rubs her forehead. It seems I'm about to do something very stupid, but hey, I came here, didn't I? Why not make a run of it? She fixes you with a hard stare. Sleeper, you're all I've got. No crew, no friends, you're it. She looks uncomfortable. I appreciate the time you've put in on Amber, and I'm sure we sh uh, she would too if she could. What I'm saying is, if you screw me on this, I will kill you. She leans over and hands you a stack of chits. A big stack of chits. You don't dare to count them. Get me that shit, mind sleeper. Don't make me regret this. You won't. She sighs. Look, just get out of here before I change my mind. You slip out of the galley and head back towards the main, do uh, main lock. As you do, Amber growls and creaks like a caged animal. You reach a hand out to calm her. Time to find Ankita a ship mine somehow. Ah, easy peasy, honestly. Uh, first let's go to the scrap freighter. Um, and we're going to go ahead and buy some scrap. This will likely give me a ship mind. It generally does. Yeah, there's one. I just need one more and then I can form a fish, uh, sh ship mind. There it is. And I'll go ahead and buy one more because I can actually use scrap, but they gave me a ship mind fragment again. Uh, and now I think, uh, can't remember. Do I go to the Ort exchange? Play the exchange, sell components. I don't want to do either of those. I forget how to form the ship mind. It's been a while. Ort fabricator. There it is. Throw that in there. And I think I actually profited from this. She gave me far more than I needed. Then we go back. Amber Gris. Ship mind. There, there you go. I don't even think I took an hour on that one. 
Upgrade point, hey. You drop the ship mine core into the galley table with an emphatic bang. And Kita spins around from where she's been poring over some documents on her slate. Holy shit, sleeper, did you actually land a ship mine? She rushes over and hefts the huge cylinder, turning it back and forth. Well shit, it might actually work. She smiles wider than you've ever seen. Where did you get it? I built it. Built it? Well, well, you are full of surprises. And Kita bangs on the galley wall. Hear that, Amber? The sleeper got you a new ship mine. The sound echoes down the ship's passages. You have to admit, being in a small space with Ankita when she's this excited is a little intimidating. Ankita puts the uh, ship mine back on the table. I'll start the process of fitting it as soon as I can. I might need your help with some of it. She heads back towards the counter to ga uh, grab her slate. This isn't the only good news today, either. Looks like my good karma is finally coming in. She throws the slate onto the table and spins it so that you can see the screen. Take a look at this. You can see a list of names and numbers, nothing that exciting, along with what looks like a transit timetable. I found them. The thieves? Exactly. Well, the thief, singular, she points at a name on the list, or more specifically, Ashton Cade. It was his past that was used to access Amber and slice the ship mind. I thought he might have been killed or robbed, his past stolen, but it turns out he crossed the Founder's Gap the very next cycle. Founder's Gap? That big rift in the station. You can't cross it without the Founder's Ferry. She leans back in her seat. I know some of the crew over at the ferry, old Mercs, used to run in an outfit I worked with. I saw them in the Overlook, and they mentioned they saw Ashton crossing. I checked the manifest, and there he was. Looks suspicious. He hasn't said a word since the theft, and anyone wanting to hide out might do. Uh, might head to the Greenway and go to the ground. She flexes. He won't get far, though. There's no real docks out there, only a couple of jetties on the wastes. Going after him? Not yet. First I want to fit the ship mind, she pauses, but maybe you could help me out. Sure. How? It's like this. I head over there, especially in Amber. He'll spot me a mile off and go underground. He'll find a way to slip the station, or he'll bury himself so deep in the wastes no one will ever find him. But you, Ashton doesn't know you. All I need is for you to go there and sniff around. Not at the commune, not at the stacks. He will have gone to the edge, the margins, the wild places. That's what Ashton likes. You see him, you locate him, ping me on this. She hands you in a calm earpiece. Seeing as this is Merc w uh, work, I'll be happy to give you Merc pay. She shifts in her seat. Thing is, I haven't got much left, so how about I tell the boys who run the ferry to give you a discount? I know it's not much, but once I grab this coward, I'll pay up. 200 cryo, nothing less. What do you say? Okay. She gives you a heavy whack on the shoulder. Good. I owe you. She lifts the ship mind onto her shoulder with worrying ease. I'm going to go uh, get this fitted into Amber's core. You get any info, any sense of where Ashton is hiding, let me know. She goes to turn and then stops. And once again, sleeper, thank you. I appreciate it. And Kita stomps off into the guts of Amber with the ship mind, leaving you in the galley. You glance around and suddenly nervous energy descending at what is to come. You never thought you'd get work as a mercenary, but then again, it seems the eye is full of surprises. We got a upgrade point. Do I even want to spend that? I don't think so. <clears throat> I would prefer to save for like into it, but I could spend to uh, undo my endure. Well, let's just do that since like I don't think I have enough time to really make use of anything else Kind of want to finish this derelict unit Complete waste of time <clears throat> makeshift apartment Absolute waste of time and resources, but you know could could be fun Uh, we got two more cycles left on this. Wild margins. Let's look for this guy. This guy. Uh, well. Again. Absolutely fast track this a little bit. <clears throat> I don't really have anything else to do except for the mushrooms. There's always the mushrooms, isn't there? This is going to be just barely not enough, isn't it? Yup. It always is. 
Please, please no negative. Please no negative. Nice. Neutral. Good enough. And Kita. <clears throat> the trail ahead extends deep into an overgrown section of the greenway. At this far end of the ring, where the long, lazy curve of the greenway becomes the shattered landscape of the wastes, things are oddly quiet. Ahead stands a vast farm stack, broken from its axis by rust of, or force, and lying amongst the overgrown landscape like an ancient temple. It's, it is stained with moss and algae, flows of green running out from its broken tanks like a frozen brackish tide. This is where Ashton is hiding, you're pretty sure. All of your intuition points to the shadows beneath this collapsed superstructure. You rolled the calm headset Nikita gave you in your, in your palm. Uh... Call Ankita. You slip the headset into your ear and it fizzes with static. After a few moments you hear Ankita. Sleeper, have you located the target? A doubt enters your mind. Can you be sure he is there? Uh... No, hold. Confused silence. Maybe it is better that you confirm that Ashton is there before you call Ankita. You put the headset back in your pocket. Not yet. You need conf confirmation. You survey the route ahead. There is a direct route, a line of broken pillars that take you into the center of the structure. Or you could skirt around the pillar, keeping to the cover of the raised spine of the greenway, and work your way around. It'll take longer, but is uh, better concealed. Skirt around. You decide on the long route and head off toward the central spine. It is slow going there, where the overgrowth meets the metal wall, but it is so concealed that you can barely see the glass roof high above. You follow the wall, knowing it will lead you to the edge of the collapsed stack. For the final part of the journey, you have to work your way through dense over, uh, undergrowth, pushing aside branches and fronds. It is exhausting, and you stop on a small rise to rest. It has been hours since you began. You desperately hope Ashen hasn't moved on. Just ahead, a, a soft glow is coming from somewhere within the farm stack. A glow light. Still on after all these years, perhaps? You take a little longer to rest and then push on. You follow the faint glow of the stack. You find a broken tank and then uh, step through the opening, trying to avoid the broken glass that sits among the moss and algae. You work your way up the slanted tank, carefully, quietly. Somewhere dr water drips, and you swear you hear bird song. Hanging plants catch the light, coating the place in a pale and sickly green. As you reach the edge of the tank, you hear something, an echoing hiss like a hydraulic piston. You quickly move up where the tank opens into the central drum and look over the edge. The vast drum is like a cistern, with plants growing on all sides and wet mossy islands at, the, at its base. It is beautiful and for a moment you can't see anything but tones of green. Then you see the sleeper. In a faint circle of light descending down through the drum, the sleeper lies slumped at, the, at an odd angle. They are surrounded by crates, and beside them, and on one of the mossy islands, there is an object. A cylinder set on a tarp. It is connected to the sleeper's head. You flinch. Are they, uh, one of the others? One of the ones that escaped with you? You squint, trying to recognize them. They are twisted, broken open, wrong. You look away. Jump down. You push yourself to the edge, then awkwardly jump, uh, drop onto the mossy islands. It is further than you think, and you fall flat onto the soft green, the smell heavy in your nostrils. You make your, you make your way towards the sleeper, slowly, carefully, the soft moss covering your footsteps. Before you... Have you, uh, before you have even gone two steps, the first shot rings out. It passes so close that you feel the ripples of air radiate fr out from you. You drop to the ground as the sound echoes around the drum, blanking out all noise. A voice calls out. That's close enough. The next one will end you. Ashton, you assume, is somewhere in the wall of tanks on the opposite side. W what did you do to them? I'm saving them. Their body is dead, but with the ship mind, he pauses. Look, this is none of your business, so I'd appreciate it if you just went on your way. I'm going to start counting soon, just so you know I'm serious. A pause. I don't want to kill you. At that moment, you hear a sound, a soft hiss like a hydraulic piston. You turn, and there is Ankita, slipping into the drum behind you. Of course, 
she was tracking the headset. You fun, uh, suddenly feel stupid, tricked. She meets your eye and shakes her head. The gunshot breaks the silence, blanking out all noise. It h hits Ankita's shoulder piece, the ceramic armor cracking but holding as she braces into the impact. Then she launches herself forward, the now activated armor launching her across the drum. Another shot goes wide before she reaches the cover of the crates beside the sleeper. Shit, you hear the shout from one of the tanks high on the far wall. And Kita reaches over and wraps a hand around the thick connection between the ship mind and the sleeper. What is she doing? You better come down here or I'll rip this right out of their head. She screams at the wall of tanks. You shiver at the suggestion. And Kita, stop. She flinches, but she doesn't take her eyes from Ashton. Quiet, sleeper. And Kita shouts. A shot rips through the moss beside you, filling your vision with green. The shooter must be somewhere on the other side of the tank. Do that again, and I swear to God I'll rip their head off. And Kita shouts to them. Sleeper, you stay down. There's a long pause. All you can hear is the dripping of the water running from the walls of the drum. Then Ashton calls out. I'm coming down, Ankita. Don't do anything stupid, for God's sake. He disappear He appears at the far side of the drum, stepping through the shallow water, rifle raised above his head. Drop the gun, Ankita shouts. He throws it down onto the moss. As you lean out to watch, you see him catch your eye, clocking your presence. What are you up to here, Ashton, you sicko? He stands, keeping her sidearm trained on his head. You ripped my ship mine for what? Some freakish experiment? Ashton approaches with shaking hands, his eyes now fixed on the connection bundle of wires that Ankita still has hold of. Steady, Ankita. It isn't like that. I needed the ship mind. You have to understand. They, have, they would have died without it. What are you talking about? I don't give a shit why you ripped my ship mind and crippled my ship. I should put you down right now. She tightens her grip on the connection. Typical of you, Ankita. No curiosity. Ashton smiles shakily. That's why I never asked for it, for your help. You only look uh, you only look after yourself. He nods at you. That sleeper up there, they are just bait, right? To draw me out? Ankita sucks a breath in. Are you trying to give me more reasons to shoot you? I love them, Ankita. Ashton looks at the crumpled sleeper. I love them, and they were going to die. I knew you would never understand that. He starts closing the gap between himself and Ankita now, slowly inching forward. Don't do that, Ashton, Ankita snarls. Don't do that. Let the wires go, Ankita. Let us go. If you don't get out of my way, he inches closer. Please. I can't let you take it, Ashton, Ankita hardens her stare. You stole it from me. You left me for dead. She shakes her head. You think I'm going to trust you after all that? I need it, Ankita. I need them to survive. Ashton is in reach of the sleeper now, of Ankita. I'm going to take them now, Ankita. He raises a hand. I'm going to take the ship mind and go. Ankita loosens her grip on the connection a little. Her hand is shaking now. Stop, Ashton. She lowers the gun a little. Stop. Seeing her drop her guard, he makes his move. A blur of movement. A struggle, a shot, another, another. You recoil back behind the edge as they ricochet around the inside of the drum, the sound deafening you. When you crawl back to the edge, Ashton is bleeding into the water, the red and the green. Ankita is standing at the center of the drum, the severed connection in her hand. The water drips endlessly, drip after drip. You force yourself to look at the broken sleeper. There is no sign of life, of humanity. They are just another broken object among other broken objects, while all around living things grow and thrive. Ankita finally looks back up at you, tears in her eyes. She begins to say something. Something that might be, sorry, but you are already gone. Well, that's really, uh, I have to say, annoying. Uh, I, I voiced a complaint a, a little while ago, maybe a few episodes ago, that I, I feel like the most frustrating thing about this game, 
uh, about its narrative design is that I don't feel like a participant as much as a spectator. Um, you know, like there's all this TTRPG stuff, there's all this RPG stuff, but when it comes down to like actually changing the course of things, I really don't feel like I do much. I feel like I am just a passive observer. And before me is a uh, sleeper, someone I've heard about, someone that I th heard was important, like potentially to me, that has something to do with my history, with my background. Uh, that might have answers to me specifically, my like personal background. And I'm just like standing there watching this go down. I have no say in it. I don't say anything. Like my character never seems to say anything. They just kind of ask questions and go along with whatever. And I mean, like maybe part of that is my fault, but also I feel like part of it is the direction of the writing it's like like i as a you know having l more less stake in this story than the actual character feel like would have done more to try and stop this from happening you know literally asked her to stop like he, they do but it doesn't really change anything right so uh you know ashton dies the sleeper dies and I'm just kind of like left there to watch and and be annoyed. Like, uh, and I don't know, like, you know, is it the, is the point that it's annoying? Is is it is the point that it's frustrating? Because I I don't think that makes it better. I, I you know I think that that just makes it frustrating. Like it succeeds in its goal. You know what I mean? Um. I do kind of wish there was occasionally a bit more of an interaction. Like, you know, uh, maybe is that we have all of these dice. I, I, I don't have any at the time, I'll admit. But, you know, maybe if I had some left over, I could have, like, rolled for into it or engage or anything, right? To, to intercede, to stop these events from unfolding. But it is what it is. Um, you know, for the most part, I do like this game. I just think that that's a little bit of, um, uh, a little bit frustrating. Uh, do I have to do anything here? Stabilizer synthesis, right? I could, if I wanted to synthesize stabilizer. And the cycle. Oh, I was starving. Shoot. I'm probably going to lose condition for that. Hopefully I'll still be at five dice. Cool. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and use some scrap to keep us at five dice. I want to make the most of the rest of the game. Flotilla aid, bring mushrooms to Briar. Get to know Emphis, help Bliss complete to something. Talk to Ankita about what happened. Yeah, I mean, uh, personally, I, I think that uh, after that, I wouldn't really want to have anything to do with Ankita. We have one cycle left before our plant grows. I don't know where Ankita is. Not seeing anywhere. Yeah, I mean, like, personally, if the our character was a bit more proactive in their own opinions and not just like siding with the opinions of other characters, uh, personally, I would go to Ankita's ship and rip it up. In, in half after that like actually zero reason for her to do that zero none it just annoying just to be a, a jerk because it's like I, I already got you a ship mine so there's no reason to take it back 
actually no reason to take it back. Uh, your ship is fully repaired, thanks to me, by the way. And you don't even, like, care about what, you know, like, my feelings on the situation. So, uh, you, you'd be walking back to a broken ship. Like, unsalvageable. Amber is docked here at a rickety old jetty, but she's sealed up. A note says, sleep or stay, I'll be ready soon. Help. We've got a lot of dice, not really a lot of ways to spend them right now. Uh, let's grab some spores. Oh, I should grab some food first, I suppose. Farm stacks. Let's just get them from this, the farm stacks. I suppose I could grab, I could steal them. They pay by yield. Uh, I'll just pay for some food. Actually, no, I won't, because I, I seem to recall that it, it not being worth it. Emphasis is, like, the best place to buy food, and that is always going to be true, I think. It's a shame I'm never going to be able to get uh, him at that Mat uh, Matataki broth. All right, let's um, go and grab some mushrooms. I don't know if there's really any reason. They're not going to grow in time. Actually, no possible way they're going to grow in time. Okay, we got some mushrooms. This is the last spore that we need. They're going to take... Four cycles, yeah. I'm not going to be here to to farm them. Let's check on the side reel. We have three cycles left on the side reel. We have two cycles left on Bliss's Bay, so we might be able to wrap something up on that. Uh... Unfortunately, I think I will probably get to see the end of Ankita's storyline. Uh, I don't know. Why not? Let's progress um, on this. Patrol the ward. Oh, I shouldn't have wasted that six on that. But we got some energy from that, so that's nice. Let's re-roll these. Ah, perfect. Oh, we get scrap components from this? Oh, God. Well, okay, we don't... We, we have a chance for scrap components. Still? That If I had known that, I would have done this a long time ago. As you say your goodbyes to the other enforcers and walk back to the low end, a ch uh, chirruping that catches your attention. In a quiet corridor away from the main uh, thoroughfares, someone has uh, stuck a small recorder to the wall with a suit sealant tape. Written across the fluorescent tape is one word, sleeper. You peel it away from the wall, and as you do, it triggers some kind of improvised trip switch. Sleeper, Sabine's voice crackles through. I have seen you with yet again members. Are they holding you captive now too? A high whine. I am sorry if I dragged you into this. Do not trust them. Something is happening within the gang. Some kind of power struggle. You covered the speaker a little. Their voice too loud in the quiet corridor. I will come soon. Thanks for your efforts. I have located most of their properties. At the right time. A pause. I will see you soon. Don't give up. Remember our deal. The recording cuts out. You stare at the recorder, processing what you have just heard. Hearing Sabine's voice again opens up something inside of you. An S and ARP employee. Do they know that I know? You struggle with a mix of concern and distrust. You throw the recorder into a nearby waste chute as you leave the corridor, still unsure who to trust, and head quietly out of the low end. Oh, well, hey, something. Uh, that's another cycle done pretty much at the end of the episode it wouldn't surprise me if the next episode is uh, isn't the last one 
Let's just use the scrap to repair ourselves. Uh, double check on some threads over here. Oh, Rico. So th we're, we're good now. Rico has something in her hands when you enter the lab. It looks like a knotted twist of woody stems, a ring about the circumference of a human head. Consisting of a single stalk at one side and a branched woven network at the other As you approach she holds it up and in the light of the lab. It looks like a Crown Rico finishes your thought she smiles and shakes her head in disbelief. I was gonna say it probably it looks like the station Is that what grew It is I came to the plant this morning and this loop was all that there was she points to a lump on the edge of the ring. The seed grew right back into itself, twisted up out of the soil. That being you can encountered in the cloud, as you call it, was it wearing one of these? She eyes you suspiciously, still unsure if she is somehow embroiled, embroiled in an overlong prank. No. She sighs. I suppose that, e that would be too easy. She smiles to herself. A root crown. She places the objects on the bench and shuffles to her analysis terminal, her face lit by its amber light in the dim corner of the lab. Well, it isn't exactly a plant, anyway. Not from what I can tell. She gives you a serious look. No leaves, no chloroplasts, just a series of filaments encased in cellulose walls. Filaments? See, that's why I like you, Sleeper. You're so good at spotting the unusual details. She beckons you over. Look at this. You see a cross-section scan of the crown. It's layers of plant light structure on full view, until you reach the center. There, instead of xylem and a phloem uh, for transporting nutrients, something branched and woven glints. Are those wires? She laughs. I'm not sure whether to say yes or no that here. These are not wires, like those in an electrical system, no, but they are filaments of a conductive material, so yes? She leans closer to the screen. But you see these branches? They remind me of dendrites. Uh, of neurons. She rubs her eyes. Which is frankly ridiculous. You look back at the crown on the table as Rico fusses over the scans, and you suddenly realize what it reminds you of. You remember signing the forms. The walk to the sleeper tanks. The cold metal floor. Uh, then you remember the crown they fitted you with. The branching structure of wires and pads. No, not a crown. They called it an interface. A tool of your emulation, your transference from neurons to electrons. An interface. That is your gift from Gardner. You turn back to Rico. It's an interface. Rico looks at you puzzled. Something clicks in her mind. Perhaps something she heard from the sleeper she had helped all those cycles ago. She starts talking, partly to you, partly to herself. If the club heads were made for you, then this too could be made for you, for your frame. She shuffles over quickly to the interface, a word that has stuck to this strange branched object quickly in her mind. You are right, that entity is the entity I have been looking for. She shuffles quickly to the crown. They are the entity which is controlling the Greenway, which has been maintaining it, supporting it, and has been guiding it for all these decades. She stops to catch her breath. They want to talk with you. Rico leads you to a seat. I will be here, sleeper, if something happens. If you wish me to remove the crown, the interface, just squeeze. She grips your hand tightly. You meet her eyes, clouded with age, but bright with the thri a thrill of new discoveries. Then she places the interface on your head and everything blinks out. Back into the river, back into the dark flow, but something is different now. You are no longer pushed, no longer blocked and buffeted by the swarm, by the storm. Instead, it flows around you. You move, and it parts, letting you pass. Something else resists, but it gives easily enough. You look back and see your body. You have left it behind. Somewhere, Rico's voice is talking to you, asking you questions. It is excited, eager, desperate to know what lies on the other side, what the entity has to say to you. 
You realize how long she has waited for this moment, for the moment of meeting between the inhabitants of the Greenway and its protector, and yet, she is still on the outside. You shake off the sadness, you will be her eyes, then you see the figure, gardener, out in the storm, planting. It takes less than a moment to reach them, you have never felt so free. This is how a navigator must have felt, released from their prison. This, you think, is what it feels like to be in the place you were built to inhabit. Gardner does not turn at you, uh, at your approach. They go on planting, but their voice whispers in the waters like a sharply rising current. You grew the gift! Their speech hisses around you. Good, I am glad. I wanted to meet you. Then we are the same, both eager shoots seeking one another. How does it feel to be free of your seed? They, st st uh, they stoop to plant again. My seed? That in which you were contained, from which you will grow. There are, there was some disagreement, continues Gardner, as if you were picking up on a long-held conversation. With the others, they felt you were a danger, but they are always cautious, especially the fungi. They like old loam, known knowns, wide and stable networks. The fungi were cautious? Mostly yes, although there are many among their number who favor short growth cycles. Thick nutrient veins and sudden shifts. He gestures out into the storm, and though you cannot see them, you feel presence all around, sensing this audience with great interest. After all, they understood that it was I who made them their crowns, and without them they would not have joined the chorus. So they see that it is only fair that you get your chance to join too. Join? Yes, become part of this, Gardner stoops again. We are millions and we grow. I hope you understand. I am unused to speaking to your kind. It has been many cycles since my last conversation. I think it was with Chief Executive Tre uh, Trellick himself. You look around and you see it. Every growing thing, every non-human being in the Greenway is here. They are networked, connected, branched, and linked by this strange being, this artifact of the old station. The impossible dream of a senile farm administration, AI, a living network. You could dissolve here, you realize, free of that decaying body. You wouldn't need to be a person. Why would you, among all these other minds? You turn away from Gardner for a moment and look back at your body. A tiny hairline thread connects it to you. You hear Rico's voice again, still asking, still checking in. Are you okay, sleeper? What are they saying, sleeper? Are you still there, sleeper? Something in you sighs a long sigh, a sigh that speaks of an exhaustion beyond tiredness, an exhaustion rooted deep inside you. It stems from the effort of answering questions, of answering problems, of getting up and breathing each cycle. But something else resists the sigh, a yearning, a sense of distance, a desire to squeeze that hand that holds you for its warmth, its blood, its complexity, to make a gesture that says, I'm still here, I'm still alive, I'm with you. The two ideas spin around within you, making you nauseous. If you break that thread, you will be free, free to dissolve here, to grow strange and beautiful among a million others. If you follow it, if you sque squeeze Rico's hand, you will wake up, back in that dying body, with all the pain and warmth that it entails. Now is your moment to choose. Yeah, I mean, I, I have threads back there as well. Your eyes track the thread across the whirling dark back to your body. But this choice, you realize, will not be presented again. Follow it. You don't look back at Gardner. You don't dare, dare risk it. Instead, you follow the thread, delicately, carefully, like a diver following their lifeline back to the surface. The river whirls around you, but it doesn't pull. It isn't jealous. Neither does it understand. It is, after all, just a river. It isn't a person, a flesh and blood person, with wants, with desires, with the capacity for love and hate. It doesn't understand you, and you don't understand it. So you don't focus on it. You don't think back on it, on what feels like such a long journey back through the dark. You set your mind on eyes instead, on hands, things you can focus on, hold on to. And then, after an age of crossing, you are there, settling back into the chair, into a body in a chair, 
and the overwhelming sensations that come with being a living thing with a rich and detailed sensorium. For a moment you feel like you have made a terrible mistake. Who would choose this weight, this anxiety, this deep well at the center of existence? But then you, real, you feel it, Rico's hand, gripped hard around yours, trembling a little, sweating a little, Rico's hand with its brittle bones and crumpled skin. Rico's hand. And in that moment you understand why you made this choice, and then you squeeze Rico's hand and you wake up. What? Excuse me? Yo! Yo, I chose to came back because I had shit left to do. I, uh, I'm not yet sure if that is actually the end, or maybe... Okay. Sleeper. Rico's voice comes wavering through the dark. Are you still with me? You sit up, the lab a bright green glare that fades as you gather yourself. I'm here. Rico smiles. Good. She squeezes your hand. I thought you'd left me for a moment. What? She pauses. Who? She smiles. Tell me about it. Tell me everything. Tell her the truth. You tell Rico everything. You tell her about the gardener, that strange farm administrator AI that has grown to be so much more. About the chorus, that impossible configuration of networked plants, and finally about the choice the gardener offered you. She listens attentively, but her responses are hard to read, and you wonder if she might have made a different decision had she been in your place. Yeah, well, see, again, this is what annoys me is given actual context for the decisions I was making, I would have let Rico like meet the gardener. Like, you know, I, I understand that I am, I'm like the passive observer, right? But I never get to make the actually important decisions. I, given that choice would have passed it on to Rico. Like, she should 100% be able to make that choice more than me. I just stumbled across the seat, right? I didn't earn it. I, I was given the opportunity to, to find it, but, like, it's it wasn't really my decision to make. I, I don't have a strong connection to the Greenway like Rico does. Why isn't she sh being offered this choice why isn't she being offered the chance to have literally all of her life's work all of her answers answered or questions answered why like my character is not not the person to make that decision so i i find it a little bit frustrating that you know i i'm the one who's like given this this choice that you know, where other choices would have made more sense. I don't know. Eh. Call it a difference of opinion, I suppose. She listens attentively, but her responses are hard to read. Okay, so thank you, Sleeper, for telling me. I know it isn't easy for uh, to say such things. People so often do not wish to hear strange to truths. She looks away. And thank you for returning to me, though I know you had your own reasons. She squeezes your hand reassuringly. Something passes between you then. A kind of shared sadness for the impossible choice. The choice to escape your body, or to stay and suffer it. Her smile is warm and generous. And whatever the wisdom of your choice, you are glad to feel welcome in this moment. In this place. And then suddenly she stands and walks a little away, as if trying to escape an unpleasant thought. You worry that she knows all too well what it takes to make a choice like you did. 
So sleeper, do you plan to stay in the commune with us? I have other things to do. Rico raises an eyebrow. Well, be careful at least. We will miss you here. She pauses. I will miss you. Rico uh, crosses back over to you and takes one of your hands in both of hers. Just make sure to think of us out there. Haifa needs new blood if it wants to survive and she squeezes you are a good friend look after yourself rico and you sleeper don't let me keep you rico waves you away and limps back to her terminal as she does you notice a crown in her hand and she places it on the bench with great care you can't help but feel a little curious about what she intends to do with it then you are out breathing the air of the greenway fresh as a spring morning the dappled light makes a patchwork of the greening landscape and you walk into it, sensing the movements of the gardener's chorus all around. And you are glad to be here in this strange and beautiful place a little longer. Yeah, not much longer. Well, uh, I'm going to uh, call it there for this episode. Long, long episode. And uh, we're going to finish it. Finish the game in the next episode. Uh... I'll try and tie up as many loose threads as I can. Admittedly, there aren't that many. Uh, I guess we could have done more at the Overlook bar. Uh, maybe that's about it. But I, I, I've done as much as I can do. I don't like the ending I've chosen. But I don't really like the other endings that I've been presented with either. So, uh, you know... Maybe that's a me problem. I'm willing to live with that, you know. But anyway, if you're enjoying this series, and uh, if you have enjoyed this series, then maybe hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.